Hey everyone, it's uh, Scraps, also known as Jordan here. So today I wanted to talk about gain reduction, or uh, what exactly is gain reduction, how can it be applied, what are the best methods, and just exactly the overall question, what it is. Gain reduction happens when it happens very quickly in side chaining and what happens is it brings the level of your total volume for a specific part or synth very found in uh, trance that pumping synth that you hear throughout the th the track in major and most of all trance like Anja beats and Anja deep and that's the only example I can think of but in like Paulo can fold stuff and oh man just uh, classic trance tunes you'll hear it a lot and it mostly happens with chords that you'll get this uh, gain reduction sound effect and I'll I'll play a little bit for you so that way you understand what's going on I'll also explain exactly what is gain I'll explain uh, I don't know where the terminology comes from but I could show you some of the best tips and tricks so here's an example And I'll remove one of the one of the kicks so that yeah. I really can't talk these past couple of days. But I'm going to remove uh, a kick every other bar so that way you can hear the impact change. Oh. Now, as you can tell, I'll probably zoom in at this point so that way you can see the gain reduction. But it's it's probably hitting about 30 decibels or so. And it's squashing the sound down so that way it has... Every time this kick happens... Let me go back to the view. Every time this kick happens, the reduction on this signal goes down. So every time the kick hits the gain goes down and creates this pumping sound but unfortunately that's not gonna work for the synth so I'm gonna cancel that out uh. anyways so what exactly is gain well stop moving well gain is another word for volume and gain allows the amount of volume to happen in a signal, like the amount of a current effect. Like there is unvoiced gain here, although it's measured in decibels. So decibels are the same thing as gain. Gain is the same thing as volume. So now that we've established that, and even levels, levels is volume as well. There is a lot of things that deal with uh, just just the impact it has like uh, maybe if I open up this this demo you'll see it yeah here it is in this filter it's 24 decibels and it's allowing uh, one of the filter to sweep through either by cutting off one of its signals or let's see a low pass ladder filter that would be low pass ladder filter is cutting off all the high frequencies it's not the other way around uh, this is a high pass filter where it sweeps through all it's right now it's at 12.5 kilohertz so it's going to sweep through all your high uh, mod I'm sorry your lower modulation and the sound for it so this the one on the left that has it kind of looks like an L flipped on its side uh, and it has the curve fading off on the right that is a low pass ladder filter. Now, when they have um, 24, it's we can't re actually see the rest of this. But let's see. Let's see if I can zoom in. Yeah. 
this curve, this end right here, what this is doing is that it's slowly decaying off, but it's not exactly correct. And the newer version of Live, they've actually fixed this, and I'm glad they did because this curve is straight down <laughs> when you fix it. And it goes down uh, to about 24 decibels, and some just slowly fading off uh, around 869. It actually goes farther because it goes, goes uh, uh, it just slowly fades off and doesn't give an exact point. So that's one of the problems with uh, these uh, filters. But you can also get some very crazy results. I just want to expand on that idea that we're going to be talking about in the next video. These videos are going to be kind of short and maybe about 10 minutes or so long. Anyways, um, but that's what uh, gain reduction is. That's what gain actually is. It's volume and it's how much of the volume we want allowed in. Drums, I typically keep them at zero, uh, zero level, zero decibels, um, because in most techno, you see this? In most techno, you're, you're going to just get zero decibels, or that's probably negative two. That's not much. And a lot of bad processing is when you put the volume levels all the way up. But actually, I can see there's a little bit of room here at the top. I don't know if you can see that. There's a little bit of room up here. So it's giving the waveform not uh, much distortion, but still a little bit of room to breathe. And uh, to be honest, I like tracks that breathe a lot more than this. Um, like, let's see, uh, I'm surprised, I really am, that surprisingly, this guy, Dead Mouse, Joel Zimmerman, uh, most of his tracks, like Cthulhu Sleeps, let's see if I can drag that in here. Yeah, Cthulhu Sleeps and all his, his other tracks, he uses the same technique where he leaves a little bit of room at the top for the symbols to breathe. Um, but it's it's well mastered. I'm sorry, Mord Fustang, uh, your signals are not mastered that very well. Um, his, his drums are punchy, his snares hit much harder, but I would have to say when it comes to Joel Zimmerman's processing, uh, he probably uses the SSL mixer, but yeah, it's, it's the dynamics, what makes a good track kick, what makes a good snare hit, and it's actually the gain reduction in your track. The lower the gain reduction, the higher you can play it at safer levels. Also, always, 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 always limit your tracks. Now, when you become an expert in dealing with the volume of your track or the gain in your track, I'm just going to use volume because I'm more accessible to be using volume instead of gain. Nobody understands what gain is. I'm not sure where it comes from, but gain is just essentially volume. So, one of the things, always limit your tracks. There are two ways of limiting. Limiting by adding a limiter, so that way every time it hits, it will get negative 30. So, you'll have a teeny, teeny bit of room at the top when the signal passes through. Uh, so, you can either have it a limiter and have the ceiling at negative 8.5, because negative 8.5 is commercial use and is what makes all the great tracks hit much harder. And also is, you can also play this over the radio with this negative 8.5 or negative 85 if you don't like decibels. I'm sorry, decimals. Ah! <laughs> Anyways, um, another one, if you want an analog uh, output, I've covered this in one of my videos previously, but you want a uh, a sign fold so that way it doesn't distort make sure everything is at zero and you turn on soft clip this amplification process 
allows this signal to go through an analog waveform, giving it the most um, characteristic without blowing it or sounding cheesy by cutting off your signal um, by like slitting slitting a mannequin's throat. It's uh, a limiter is very brutal on your tracks. So unless you want um, just something to muck around with, always use a limiter in this case. So that's essentially what gain reduction is. That's what gain is. Uh, it achieves a better sound in dealing. And always, 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 if you're working with headphones, uh, this blue decibel meter here uh, measures how much you preview sounds. So, like, for this instance, I'll turn it to negative 5 and play, play a sound. So, uh, or preview a sound. So, let me just quickly navigate to my library. And I'll play, let's see, templates. Nope. Samples, waveforms. I'll play these for you so that way you, you can hear how much gain reduction actually affects your hearing. Oh, whoops. Nope, that's correct. I forgot to turn the Q output. The Q is allows you to hear what's coming or what you want next. So, I'm gonna play these. So it's at negative 5 right now, I'll turn it to 0 and play this again. Or maybe I'll make this negative 10. So there's different volume levels when you're queuing different sounds. Like negative 10, negative 5, and 0. It's always better to have your volume, or your gain in this case, uh, close to where it doesn't blow your ears, or even minorly hurt your ears. And you can feel it hurting your ears, so um, make sure your levels are at safe volume, and then when it's time to master, then you can bring up your volumes, uh, your different volumes of your different tracks. But that will do it for this video. In the next video, I'll talk about filters, how they affect um, certain things, how they, uh, how they work, what's so great about a filter, yada, yada, yada. So I'll catch you that in the next video.